Maseches Bovikame, Daf Tzaditesh Amudalef. We are in the middle of the page of Tzaditesh Amudalef. The line starts with Ulamai Desalika Daitin. The line starts with the words Ma'ata, um, Bema'ata. More or less in the middle of the of the page, Bema'ata. Da'inu Schirus. Okay, let's just recap on yesterday. All the soldiers that died for this land. Yes, you do. Lionel, Ben, Yulia, Oria. We're learning yesterday, we were learning the um, concept of Rav Asi, interesting concept, a concept called Uman Koin Bishvach Kli. If a person is a craftsman, an artisan, an artist, whatever you want to call him, it's the person who works by Kablanut. He's a person who was given raw material to work with, and he's supposed to create a whole new thing. Or, we saw later on, even if he got something that is a ready product, <clears throat> but that product has to be improved, either dyed or even cleaned or softened. So that too could be called Kablonus. And then that new product or improved, renewed product belongs to who? Belongs to the artist. Why? Belongs to the worker because he invested the work. It's because of him and only because of him that this raw piece of material that belongs to the Balabais became the beautiful new piece that it is. It's only because of his, his materials, his work, his uh, colors, is whatever that makes what that change the shape of this uh, garment into a newly fresh looking washed uh, garment. And therefore that's considered to be his, therefore what? Therefore there were a few nafkaminas, the last nafkamina we saw, there is no bal tolin, which means that if you gave your suit to the dry cleaners and you follow Ravasi, by the way, nobody said Ravasi is the halach lamaisa. It's actually not, but we're just now focusing in Ravasi now. We're now in Ravasi's land. According to Ravasi, what do we say? That there is a concept here of selling the product. When he improved the product, let's say he dyed it, or he made it softer, different, better, so now he owns the product. So now when the dry cleaners gives you back the suit, he's selling you a new product. He's selling you a new product. And therefore, if you delay the payment, which is not a nice thing to do, but if you delay the payment, it's not called you're not breaking or not fulfilling that say of paying the person on time. Paying a person on time is when he's a poil. That's a whole different kind of maslul, different kind of, uh, of system. What's the story over there? If I pay somebody per hour, I pay somebody per hour or per action, as the Gemara said at the very end of yesterday's year, that he pays him for bitcha, 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 for each and every beating of the of the beged, he pays him. That's not called that he's an uman or a kablan. That's called that he's a paid worker, menial paid worker. A paid worker, you have to pay on time. That's chal sochil. But if the person is the guy who's independent and he sells you the product, <coughs> the improved product, the new product he sells you, if you buy something from the store, there's no baltolin. If you delay the payment, you bought something in the Makolet, you bought bread and milk and butter and cheese, and it cost 100 shekels, and now you you delayed, you didn't pay them after a week or two, that's not nice, but it's not called Baltolin. They're not my schirim, they, pay, they give me a product, okay? So that's what we said. According to what we thought originally <clears throat> regarding the person who, who does the cleaning, the, the cleaner or the softener, Meikoro, originally we thought, Deloy Agre Lebitshi. Originally, we made the statement that a person that does that bitshi, that person who kicks and cleans the garment, we originally thought that he's not hired Agre for kicking, he's not a poil that is there per action, but we thought that he's a kablan. We thought that he is a regular dry cleaner who gets paid 20 shekel, 50 shekel for the entire job. And what did we say? That that person, really, there is baltolin. There is a concept here of baltolin. 
of not paying on time is wrong. Wait, Misael and Rav Sheshes, that helps Rav Sheshes. The Baal Minemi Rav Sheshes, there was a question, this Bryce, according to that understanding, helps and supports the opinion of Sheshes. What did Rav Sheshes say? They asked Rav Sheshes a question. Kablonus, a person who works with Kablonus, what does Kablonus mean? Per project, working per project, per, yeah, an entire thing, not per hour. Either all of Mishum Baltolin, or Ein Oivel, yeah, is there, isn't there Baltolin? Is there a Baltolin? Is there the prohibition of don't let his money sleep, so to speak, in your house overnight, or there isn't? Do we, or don't we have the concept of Baltolin by Kablan? And Rav Shesha said, yes, if you, even if you buy something from a Kablan, not even an hourly worker, just exactly against what we said before. Rav Shesha says that if there's a Kablan, a person who gets paid for an entire project, to get from A to Z, from A to B, to do something, some work, some creation investment, and you didn't pay him on time, you are over. Ah, wait, Frag the Gemara, if so, Lema de of Sheshes, Pliga de Avasi. Do we, that's a question, it's a suggestion. Lema is always a suggestion. Lema de of Sheshes, Pliga de Avasi. Would you tell me that Rav Sheshes disagrees with Rav Asi? Which means that Lichoira, Rav Asi, and Rav Sheshes are at loggerheads. Why? Rav Asi is the one who told us that a Kablan who is an artist and he created something new, he belongs to the artist himself. And when he gives it back to me, it's a whole new sale. It's a whole new purchase. Ah, so there's no Baltolin. And yet, Rav Shesha says that a Kablan, a person who gets paid for an entire project, is Baltolin. So maybe they're disagreeing with each other. Is Rav Shesha and are Rav Shesha and Ravasi disagreeing with each other? Answers the Gemara, a brilliant genius answer. No, there is a case in which they agree. That would be a personal cur courier service, a personal postman, a shaliach to get an igeret, to get a letter from one town to the other. That would be the case in which Rav Sheshis and Ravasi agree. What? I'll answer you exactly what the Gemara means. We assumed now, I don't know if he fell into this trick. <laughs> we assume now that every kablan is also an artist or artisan or craftsman, that every person who gets paid per project actually produces an item, a product, or he improves it. He dyes your suit, he cleans your suit, he creates your suit, he creates your vase, he creates your car, he creates your I don't know what. But says the Gemara, hey, wait a minute, stop kablonim. Some people work per project, don't have anything tangible, anything physical in their hands. For example, your personal postman. Let's say you pay a personal courier, which is very common today, and you pay him not per hour. You want some very important personal letter, and from some odd, funny reason, you don't rely on the Israeli post. I don't know why, but from some odd reason, you don't. And you want this letter to get to... Um, Ardeshana, okay, and you said, listen, my good French Marilyn, I want you to get me that letter to Pardeshana yeah, by tomorrow. I'm not paying you per hour. I don't care if you go very quick or very slow, as long as by the deadline you get there, yeah? I don't care how you go, when you go. I'm not paying you per hour. As far as I'm concerned, you can play Superman and fly. I can go like a snail as long as you get there. So I'm not paying you per hour. I'm paying you per project. The project is get the letter from Ramad Beth Shemesh Aleph to Pardes Chana. That's all. That's a project. And yet, there's nothing tangible. Aha. So Mimela, Rav Sheshet and Rav Asi would agree in that case. Why? Because Rav Asi didn't say Kablan is the big boss. Rav Asi says an Uman coin of Shvachli. When you have something physical, you got some raw material and you work on it, that creation made it yours, yours being the artisan. And now you sell a new item and there's no Baltolin. The Sheikh and Rav Sheshe spoke about a Kablan, that there is Baltolin by Kablan. Rav Sheshe could still fit with Ravasi. Rav Sheshe can possibly, we don't know, but can possibly believe Ravasi that Uman Koine Bishvachli, and Uman is a big boss who's selling his product. Nevertheless, Rav Sheshe is still true. His words are still true when there's a Kablan who did not produce anything tangible. In that case, it's a Kablan. And therefore, says Rav Sheshes, by Kabbalah, there is Baltolin. He's doing work for you. He's doing work for you. You pay him right now. 
pain before nighttime. Run, run, run. Just like you run for Mincha before Shkia, run to pain before Shkia because the Kablan and the pile are the same. I, Uman, Uman is in different story. Uman Kon Bishvachli is only when he produced Umnus, an item that belongs to him, and therefore you're a customer, you're a, you're a buyer and not an employer. And therefore you don't have to pay on time or you're not over. Biter. Yeah. Now, yeah. Very good. Yeah, I'm glad you're doing Chazara. Leima Ketanoi. Oh, now we're entering, um, we're continuing the sugya, entering the realm of Kiddushin, how Kiddushin of a woman has to do with our sugya. Leima Ketanoi means what? Let us say, let us assume, let us suggest that this concept of Ravasi, that the item belongs to the craftsman, let us assume that this is machlokis between Tanoim. I will pause here on purpose and make a small introduction. A lot of things which I'm going to tell you knew already, but it's good to have it fresh in your minds because I'm going to avoid now all kinds of side questions. So now, when a man is Makadish a woman, first of all, it has to be the item that is Makadish has to be completely his, owned by him exclusively. For example, today the Esk Chasonim, the Masadri Kiddushin, is this ring yours? Because today, you know, who's the Makadish? Many times the Yeshiva Bokhar will never earn the penny for himself. Who bought him the ring? Daddy and Mommy. Okay, Daddy and Mommy. And could be they never actually took care of give, making him a Kenyan. They bought it, he took it without making a, a conscious Kenyan. So he has to do a Kenyan on the ring, and then it's his ring, and then he gives it to her. Of course, it has to belong to him. Very nice. Now, can he be a Makadish woman with a pair of shoes, with cow, with sheep, with Yes, 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 yes. That's a very uh, um, accepted minag based on Kabbalah, Kabbalah, and that is to Mekadish with the ring, and it's all very nice. Blah, blah, blah. But Lamai said anything that's worth money. Okay, all very nice. One more, uh, one more detail before we continue, and that is important for us. What about, and that's a question in Kiddushin, which we'll meet later, but I want to prepare you before the sugya, because this sugya is not really difficult, but it's like sticky. The question is, let's say a woman owes, a woman, a single woman, owes a man money. She owes him money. He lent her 100 shekels. What a nice guy. Such a nice guy. She owes him 100 shekels. Okay? Now, he's such a nice guy. She wants to marry him. Oh, oh how it developed so nicely. The relationship between the Malve and the Loiva. And now, he says to her, you know what? You have 100 shekels in your pocket. I erase my debt. And that will be the Kedushin. Instead of me giving you a ring and then eventually give me a hundred shekels, let's just, you know, cut corners, let's balance it and say, you have hundred shekels somewhere in your pocket or in your bank account that belongs to me, you have to give back to me. I'll just delete the 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 choiv, the debt, erase the debt, and that will be your kiddushin. Well, according to most opinions, an alochi cannot do that. Why not? He gave her something worthwhile. Says Rashi and the Gemara over there in Kiddushin, there's a sugi that appears at least twice. We are in Tzadi Tesamod Aleph, Rabbi Frank, Tzadi Tesamod Aleph. He actually came on time for a new, newish part of the sugya, Leima Ketanoi. Leima Ketanoi is towards the, about the, the third, third of the page. The Kitzer does not work. Why not? You know why not? Because if a man, a man has to give the woman something new that belongs to him. The money that's in her pocket, you know what it belongs to? It belongs to her. She has to give it to him. He lent her the money, not the picodon. He lent her the money so she can buy something with 100 shekels, food or ravka or something. So milva lo nitno. The milva that's by her is money that's now hers. And only when she'll have to give it back to him, then she'll have to bring out new money, not the same 100 shekels. The old 100 shekels are where are they now? But the makolit that she paid for. Now the 100 shekels that she, yeah, the, there is no con concrete 100 shekels of his in her pocket. No. The 100 shekels are out there in cyberspace, somewhere out there. Mimela, that's not called. And Rabbi Lchonen Basman says, the Chosh of Achen, the Talmud of the Chofetz Chan, Rabbi Lchonen says, for Kiddushin, you need something new. There has to be something new that wasn't hers before. To just let her stay with what she has now and let things stay as they are, that's not called a new item or a new something given by him. So that is just a side, not so side, that's one piece of information you have to have before we continue. Okay. Keep that on the side. Minimize the box of milve be kiddushin. Kiddushin be milve is a very questionable thing. 
Lema Ketanoi, back to life, back, back to our sugya. Lema Ketanoi. Let us say that Uman Kodem B'Shmach Kli is Machlok Ketanoi. It says a woman to a man, Aseli Shiraim Nezomin Betaboys. You want to marry me? He told her, marry me. Will he marry me? So she said, depends. <laughs> if you make me Shiraim Nezomin Betaboys, if you'll make me a bracelet or bracelets, you make me earrings or nose rings with a voice, make me some rings, make me jewelry, and then I'll be yours, which means I am giving you the gold, says Rashi, or the silver or the copper. She's giving him the material, the metal. He is a jeweler. He's a jeweler, a designer and craftsman. He's a jeweler. And he'll create it for her. And that will be the Kiddushin. Now, what is the Kiddushin? The gold belongs to her. <laughs> The material belongs to her. Oh, so, and she says, I want to be miskadish with what? With the improvement, with the shvach. I want to, I want to marry you, marry me, give me kiddushin in the shape of what? Of the actual ring in its new form of a ring as opposed to a piece of metal. So does that work? Says, Machlaikis, Kevin Shasan, Mekudesh is Diva Abimeir. Once he did it, so she's Mekudesh says Abimeir. In other words, it works. It works, it works. If he, if he created those jewelry for her, now that raw piece of gold became stunning piece of, of a ring, then she's Mekudesh says Rabbi Meir. Yeah, it works. Chachomim say that ain't working. It doesn't work. Ain't a Mekudesh. It does not work, that kind of agreement of make me a ring. And she gia momoin le yodo. Until she gets money into her hand. Break the Gemara. What do you mean until there's money? My momoin. What do you mean until the money comes to her hands? Are you trying to tell me Chachomim, that it's not enough that he keeps it in his store, but he actually has to give her the money, meaning the jewelry? Do you call Momoin the jewelry itself? And Chachomim says that once he gives her the jewelry, then it works? Then what does Rabbi Meir say? Frank the Gemara, Michla, that is to say, according to Rabbi Meir, that says that he did not give her the, the ring ever, and she's his wife. So what is Shemakudash? You know the rough Israeli joke? A guy comes to a chasana, comes to Bar Mitzvah, and he says, I have a gift for you. You know what the gift is? In the store. <laughs> I never bought it. It's for, it's, 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 your gift's still in the store. In other words, if Chachamim say, if Momoin, which Chachamim said, yeah, yeah, the Momoin works. If Chachamim say, yeah, he has to give her the ring, and then she's Makudash, and Abimeo says, you don't even have to do that. He left the ring in his house and never gave it to her, and she's Makudash. So what's the Mekudoshan? Obviously, you misread the Brisa. Ella, Shita, must be. And with that, we're going to stay. With that, we're going to stay. My Momoin. Momoin Acher. Which means, Chachomim say, even if you gave her the beautiful, stunning ring, that's not called Kiddushin. Rabbi Meir says that if you gave her the actual ring that he made for her, from her gold, that works. And according to Chachomim, it does not work until you give her money, meaning other money. Even if you gave her the ring, according to Chachamim, it doesn't work because it's her ring and not his. Eh. Unless he gives her another money, other from his own, another piece of jewelry exclusively his, or another coin of his, then she'll be Mekudosh. I want you people to tell me. I don't want to continue now. I'm on strike. What do you think is the Mechlokis between Chachamim and Rabbi Meir? Very, very easy. We basically, let's repeat the case. Let's review the case and let's revise the case. And let's re re read the case. Such a magic word, re. Yeah, it's a prefix. It's not a word. Yeah, again, lady, what's her name? Miss, miss, not missus. Miss someone. Miss uh, whoever asked him, this is, this is a piece of, I'm giving you raw gold, ores, metal, gold, metals, whatever, silver. Make me a ring from that. And then, I'll be your wife, I'll be miskadish to you in that ring. He crafted, he created, he sweated over it with a lot of love and care. He made a, 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 a golden uh, thing, a golden ring from her gold. So now Rabbi Meir says, great, that belongs to him. And now she's Makudash. It's his ring, she's Makudash. And Chachamim say, no, she's not Makudash. No, it's not Makudash. What's Makhlakas from Meir and Chachamim? Which means, so why does Rabbi Meir believe that's good? Why does Rabbi Meir say that it is good that he labored and worked in it? Ah, he only, because Rabbi Meir believes in, 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 what? 
Oh, Rabbi Meir believes Rav Asi. Must be the Rabbi Meir. Rav Asi is good with Rabbi Meir. Once I crafted it, it belongs to me. Very nice that the, the raw piece was yours originally. I crafted the whole new creation here. And therefore, now it's mine, says the craftsman. My ring, the Shank and Chachomim believed what? No. Chachomim believed, like you said, the Westerners. Chachomim believed, no. The mice, it's her ring. He's working for her. He's just a menial worker working for her. It's her gold that changed, and the change is not a Kenyan. So you recognize her with her own ring? That's, a, the, that's ridiculous, recognize her with her own ring. Because it's her ring, you recognize her with her own thing. Funny. However, before we say that, so the very nice, you guys hold, very nice. However, 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 now we also have to talk about the debt. Because doesn't she owe him money? Let's say she wouldn't be his beloved bride. She would have to pay money, right? Yes, there was an agreement, sorry. And she does have to pay him, I don't know, 2,000 shekels, for the beautiful stunning jewelry, right? She gave him 200 shekels worth. I don't know, 500 shekels. Now it's 2,000. Had she been anybody else, she has a debt now of 2,000 or 1,500, whatever. Yeah, there was money that she owes him. What about that? Does she, now the fact that he erases the debt, does that make a difference? No. Erasing the debt, we said, is very good. Continues the Gemara. Vesavua, but now we have a third factor. It's a bit of a tricky one. Yisugi has three factors all the time. Uman Koin Beshvachli, that's our guy. A being Mekudosh with a loan, and the third one. Vesavua, we assume now that the only way, we're now trying to, let me tell you to you in English, we're trying to rule out other ways of understanding Mechlokes Rabbi Meir and Chachomim. Rabbi Meir says he can, right? He should be Mechadoshur with that ring. Chachomim say it doesn't work. The Savrua, they thought in the yeshiva. The Kula Alma, both Chachomim and Rabbi Meir believe, Yesh ne l'schirus mitchila ve'ad soif. Yesh ne l'schirus mitchila ve'ad soif means as follows. When a person, and this is something you touched upon before, one of you, one of the British people here, Yesh ne l'schirus mitchila ve'ad soif means when a person starts working for me, as a craftsman, yeah, every bit of tuck, 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 every, every blow of the hammer, anything it does, the taxi meter starts working. Just like in a monit, in a taxi, yeah, when a taxi, the, the taxi meter, tuck, 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 yeah, goes the higher and higher. So too, according to Sam Tanoim, when a person gave work to somebody else to do, the debt starts being created right at the beginning. Let's say we decided that your work for the chair Let's say we decided to make me a new chair or make me a new beautiful uh, nose ring, you can't spend them, yeah, is worth a thousand shekels. And it took him X amount of time. Retroactively, we divide his work to thousand and every bit is worth a shekel. Every bit of his work. It's not like only at the end that that is created. Right from the beginning, there's that created. So if the woman gave it to him, if not for the romantic relationship, then a regular uh, customer, client, already accumulated a very big debt by the time that the ring came to her hand. Before the ring came to her hand, like the law in England, you owe me already a thousand shekels. The Dekula Alma, let's continue another point. A Mekadosh Bemilva ain't a Mekudoshes. As I'm glad I explained to you before, the Kadosh Bemilva is not Kiddushin. Ah, in other words, don't tell me the Mechlokes or Meren Chachomim is the fact that she owes him a lot of money now, and when he gave her the ring, he tells her, that's okay. It's on the house. I'm erasing it. You really owe me a thousand shekels, you, 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 my bride. But because I'm your groom, I want to be Mekadish you, and that should be our Kiddushin. I'm erasing the debt. Oh, I always knew you're great. No, 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 no. Everybody believes that erasing your debt is not Kiddushin because you're not giving her anything new. She owed you the money before. That money is in her pocket. She owes it to you, but it's hers now. If you owe money to someone in future, you, yeah, he didn't yet give it to her. Then what? Then that's not called giving something new, says Rebel Chonon. Mimela, what? Mikadish Mimila, she's not Mikudesh. If so, what's the only way that's left out of all three options? What is the Mechlekes between Rameer and Chachami? What stands behind the Mechlekes? What our geniuses over here said, my love must be the Uman Koine Bishmach Rikamit Lagi. Here we came to the beautiful uh, crescendo. Uman Koine Bishmach Kli, the issue of Rav Asi, that's the Mechlekes. Rabbi Meir saw that woman koin b'shmachli. Rabbi Meir believes that an woman koin b'shmachli, which means once I'm a craftsman and I want to marry someone, 
and I made her a ring, although the gold belongs to her and the silver and the diamonds and whatever you want belongs to her, but I am the owner of my creation. Imela, when the job is done, it's not because of debts and schmets, it's the actual ring. Forget about debts and all the shit. The actual ring belongs to who? To him. And therefore what? He's Mekadosh with his ring. Just like every chosen who stands in the Kinor David with a, with a ring. There, Rabbanon Savri. Rabbanon say, no. Ainu and Kone Bishvachli. Rabbanon say, nisht. Rabbanon don't believe that novel idea of Rabasi. They say, no. Lamai said the gold is hers. He's just a monkey or a robot working for her. Better get used to it. And what? And now a woman is not Kone Bishvachli. He's not Kone. It's his. It's her. Sorry. It's her ring. It's her ring. Yeah, which he improved. He did work for her, more like you would say. Yeah, more like the Western world. The what? Uh, the ring belongs to her. You can't even call it her ring. Thank you. Here's your ring. I'll, I'll give you a matona. I'll take you your watch and I'll give it back to you. Mimelo, that's Rabbanon. So now at this point, we want to say the Rav Asi, really, Rav Asi's Hiddish is a point of dispute between Rav Meir and Rabbanon, which are to know him. So a good, at least he has Rabbi Meir on his side. That's what we want to suggest now. Okay? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. right. That's uh, yeah. Now the Gmar is now now the Gmar is gonna do is turn and basically throw the dice a different way and explain Mukhlakas Rabbein Rabbanon in a different way based on what we said before. Suggest the Gmara, not proving in the suggesting, like we are three lines from the end of the narrow lines. The Kula Alma, I could possibly explain the Mechlekes from a different angle. The Mechlekes Rabban Rabbanon is the same. We just want to explain it to different ways, different explanations. Kula Alma ain't uman kone b'shvachli. We may possibly say that everybody agrees that an uman cannot be kone b'shvachli. Oh, no, no, no. Ravasi is in trouble. Possibly nobody believes that the coin, excuse me, that the ring belongs to him. Ah, so what shot in Rabbi Meir? You know the argument is they argue about how does it work when a man orders a, a work, a job, project from the, from the artisan, from the worker. Do we say, I, I'm going to read further, then we'll explain it. Abimeir believes, like you said in England, Abimeir says like this, which means money being paid, money being owed to a craftsman, to a worker, to a worker that worked on the project, is only owed at the end when he's handing, it's actually the other way, only when he hands her the ring, then she owes him money, which means she has no debt. Let's just refresh, refresh our minds. He does not own the ring, no. Let's, right now, we want to assume nobody thinks he, he, he owns the ring. We're all anti Ravasi now. On the other hand, we also know you cannot be Makadish with erasing a choiv. If she already has an old debt and it comes to her, oh, ha, ha. what's the Kiddushin? Ah, forget about those 100 shekels. Pshah, what a charmant of a guy. There, no, doesn't work. If so, well, how does Rabbi Meir say that she's Makadish? En schius el al means that only now when he gives her the ring, he's now giving her his work, which means there's no old debt. Only once he gives her the ring, only then she'll have to give him the money. If she has a debt pre-marriage before the chasana and he erases it, that doesn't work because the money is in her pocket. But if we say that the work that he owes her is only giving her now and only then she'll owe him the money, he preempted it and changed the order. And he says, this is what Tosas Rabbeinu Peret says, by the way, he gave her the money, the, the, the ring, and only now only now she got something new. What did you get new? She got the work. His work is worth money. It's true that the ring itself doesn't belong to him, but the value of his work is what he's giving her. I'm combining here Rabbeinu Peretz and Rabbeinu Khan and Dachron. I'm now giving you not a new item, but now I'm giving you an improved item. True, it does belong to me. But Lamaisa, all the work I did, now I'm giving you. And it's not an old debt that you owed me before. Only once it will be on your finger, then you owe me money, but by then, no, I already decided you don't owe me. I begin with you for free. Again, let's repeat. If we have schirus, soif, if we say schirus started right from the beginning when he started working on it on this ring two months ago, she accumulated an old debt. To erase an old debt doesn't work because she has money in her pocket 
He's saying to her, uh, stay with the money that you have in your pocket. That's not Kiddushin. But now, now, now say no. Only when it will be on her finger, then she may owe him money because only then she'll get something new. Only then the debt would be created. But he was Makadish her before it happened. He's Makadish her saying, I'm now giving you, only now I'm giving you the Hano, the enjoyment of getting by work of last two months. That is something to be Makadish with. That's what we mean. Rabbonon, Savri, yesh tzchius mitchil avad soiv. Rabbonon say no. Rabbonon say no. We work, we view the work relationship, the agreement between a, a client and a worker differently. We think that every time you order a chair or a ring or a sting or a ping or whatever you order, any product, the debt started accumulating once I bank for the first time. The first time he bangs with the angle, with the anvil, with the hammer on the item, then boom, the money, the the taxi meter starts ticking, 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 ticking. When it comes to Kiddushan and she has a fully made ring, that's an old debt. So now when he's giving turns out, you don't have to pay anything. But no, what do you mean you don't have to pay? That's money that already she has in her pocket. So she owes it to him and he never charged her. He's telling her, stay with your money in your pocket. That's not called Kiddushan, that's Rabon. It's a very fine thing to understand. That's the second way. The boy say, huh? A third way of understanding it. Again, we are now throwing the dice a third way. The Kula Alma, these are three concepts, and every time we throw the dice differently. Every time we put the limelight on a different way of Machlokis. He boys a third way of understanding. The Kula Alma is Really, everybody believes that Schirus, when I have to pay a worker, then the debt started accumulating at the very first bank, the very first hit, the very first thing. I, it's a debt. I can be Makadish with the debt. The Ocho, the Makadish Mimilvi Kamiflagi. Wow. Really, the idea of Makadish with the Milvi is a Machloikis. The Rabbi Meir Soda, a Makadish Mimilvi Mekudeshes. Wow. Rabbi Meir believes that a man can be Makadish a woman with a Milvi. Why? Because Rabbi Meir believes Milvi Lavlo, it's on it. It's a very, very interesting thing. Rabbi Meir believes that when I lend someone money, he has to always be ready to give it back to me at any given moment. I don't understand it because, of course, he has to spend it. I don't know why. That's what I saw briefly yesterday. Oh, there's the to be a time frame, right? True. Lamaisar Bemer believes that Mikadish Bemil, the erasing a debt, does work. Bemel, that's very good. It's true that she owes me money. Yes. It's true that the ring doesn't belong to me, it belongs to her. So, what am I Mikadish with? Erasing the debt. Erasing an old debt, according to Bemer, does work. I have to admit, I don't have a clear shot over here, but that's what we say. The Hano, very good. That's one shot there. Hano, the fun she has, it's not the money that's in her pocket, it's the oh, relief that she has for not having to pay. She goes back and she says, oh, Baruch Hashem, I don't have to pay. So that's Hano, very nice. So Abonon Sabri, Amikadosh Mimiv, Le'ene Mekudoshes. Abonon say no, as we classically said, no. Amikadosh her with Milva erasing a debt, that's not called Kiddushin. Man, there's no Kiddushin here. So let's summarize. If we say, no, so no. If we say any of the three, she will be Mikudeshis. Either we say, it's his ring. It's simply physically his ring. And he sells it to her. In this case, it doesn't sell her. Mikudesh, that's one. Second case, you could say, I'm changing the order of the Gemara on purpose. Mikudesh Bemilda. Really, we could say the ring belongs to who? Belongs to her. Elamai, she owes him money. It belongs to you, lady, but the law is. Pay me right now. Baal Tolin, pay me now. Oh, I'm ah, being so magnanimous. Moichel de Chayv. What do we say? Rabbi Meir says, yes, that works. Possibly. A third way is to say that there is no debt. There's no old debt. She has to give him money only upon receiving it. But that's a trick. <laughs> because she got the ring onto her hand as a married woman. So she never got to begin to, begin to owe anything. Get me? And that does work. To give her something for free. He gave her for free, basically. He gave her his work for free. Without, it's not like free that you owed me and I'm erasing it. He never started. I just gave you for free. He might give me a matano. Matano, here, look, take my phone to matano. Not worth much. It's not like you owe me and bet some of your Stop, take it, finish. That's what Rabbi Meir believes. The one of the three Rabbi Meir believes and Chachamim that say she's not the Kurdish, argue with him on either one. Now comes the final, final show. The final, uh, 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 Rava is now returning the page. 
wants to say a whole new Kiddush, and listen to this. The Kula Alma, everybody, both Rabbi Meir and Chachamim, Rabbi Meir says, Mekudeshes. Chachamim say no. The Kula Alma, Yesh no Lizchirus Mitchil about Soit. It's all bad news. Really, Lizchirus, the, the debt, debt started accumulating, accumulated right from the beginning of the work on the jewelry. But the Kula Alma, both people, Rabbi Meir and Chachamim, hold, She's not Mekudesh Mimilza. Erasing a debt does not work. But the Kulam ain't a woman called Mishmachli. And everybody believes that the ring does not belong to him. Hashem Ishmael. We are driving very, very fast into a dead end, into an abyss. What's going on? If everybody believes that nothing works, how can Rabbi Meir believe that it's good Kiddushin? Ah! Oh, comes the salvation. You know the stories? He goes, Such a nice guy. He added a little bit of metal a little bit of some kind of uh, embellishment but from himself, which means 90% of the ring is made out of her gold, okay? But then he added a little fake diamond <laughs> or a little something on top or a little new piece of uh, silver from himself. Ah, that's worth a proof of beautiful David. Worth David or David? I should have told you. Whatever, David, yeah? Pruta. Oh, very nice. So the guy is the Talmud Chacham. You know why? He's not so sure about this whole sugi and kiddushin. Le'yetel bitachon, to be extra safe on the safe side, I'll add something that's completely, completely, completely mine, worth a pruta. Does that work? I mean, yeah, why not? Nechor, it should be working. Because these Makadish were the ring that belongs to her, let's say. But on top of that, there's a cherry on top belonging completely to him. But he bought it in his own, from, by himself. If so, Rabbi Meir is good. However, before we continue, I want you to understand that if a woman is Mekudosh, I'll, I'll ask you a question, which I asked you in the past, and that will be a small introduction. Did you notice that in all of Jewish marriages, nowadays, the lady gets a very plain kind of ring, right? There are no diamonds, and no uh, all kinds of, you know, kishutim, no embellishment. Is that because Jews are misers? Because why? No Kabbalistic reason. Yeah, why? No, because she think that it's worth, it's worth <laughs> yeah in other words if you give her fancy rings it's a gemara by the way it's not something from B'nai Brak from last year it's a gemara yeah basically if she gets something fancy like diamonds oh diamonds she doesn't know much about diamonds yeah, she would think <laughs> she would think wow those diamonds are worth ten thousand this is something worth being in Scottish for you know what those diamonds are worth only five thousand when it gets to big numbers, she could be confused. So what? So maybe her das, a woman has to have das, a woman is not so passive in Kiddushan as we think she is, yeah? Elamai, she has to have in mind, I want to be miskadish to this guy over here, yeah, with a nice kippah and the talis or whatever. I want him to be miskadish me with this item and I'm aware of its value. But let's say he's miskadish with X and she thinks she's miskadish with Y. That ain't good. And that's the story of our sugi, according to Rabbah. Now we are hot to continue. Rabbi Meir Salvar, Milve Upruta. Really, the entire ring is what? Is one big loan. It's something that she owes him. But there's also Pruta. He's giving her two things to her hands. He's giving her the ring. And on top of the ring, there's a little diamond. The ring itself is just erasing a loan, right? Which is not good. And he's also giving her something which is good, which is a Pruta of himself on top. Meaning worth fruit on top, like, like David said. Daita pruta. Rabbi Meir assumes that a woman, she gets the ring that she owes, she's getting the, 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 the debt erased by getting the ring, and she's also getting the extra pruta. Her dust, her mind is on the pruta. She says, oh, wow, I only ordered what? The ring. He added the new thing. I want to be miskadish to do new thing that he added. I don't want to be miskadish on erasing debts. That's her mind. So that's good. She's a good, she's a smart girl. And we assume so, so it works. The Abonan Savri, no. Abonan say otherwise. Milve Pruta, Daita Amilve. Chachomim say, no, it doesn't work. You know why? Because we assume that when a woman gets Milve, she gets her debt erased in the shape of a free ring that she ordered from the craftsman. Plus what? At Pruta, she wants to be Miskadesh. I don't need the extra thing. I'm much more relieved that I don't have to pay for the ring. That's not good. She's mischaven to be miskadesh on the wrong thing. 
Yeah, it's like he gave her two items and her mind may be on the wrong one. And that's where Abundance say doesn't work. Wow. Ube tanoi. That itself, what's on a woman's mind is a, by itself an issue of a chlokis tanoi. The Tanya. It says in the Brisa again about Kiddushin. imech. Let's say the man tells her, Arayat mekudesh sleep, all very nice, flashlights flashing, big chasana. Instead of taking out the ring, you know what he does? He's playing a game, not playing a game, he's serious. Remember that I painted your house last week? Yeah, and you owe me money? Yeah? The Sahar that I worked for you? That's what I'm a Kaddish you. Painting the house is 2,000 shekels? That's what I'm a Kaddish you. In Sahar, what I did with you before, ain't a Mekudeshes. That doesn't work. Why? I assume because it's erasing an old debt. She owes him 2,000 from two weeks ago when he painted her house. He's, yeah, because she with that 2,000. No, erasing all debts, that doesn't work, right? Let's see both opinions. But the Sahar that I will work for you, then she is Mekudeshes. You know why? Because let's not talk about painting house. Let's make it more simple. Even painting house, actually. Let's see, he tells her, I will paint the house next week. I'll, next week I'll paint your house, our house, or whatever. I'll do it for free. Yeah. And then she's Mekudeshes. Why? Because he believes there's no a, a debt that's being accumulated right from the beginning. At the end of the project, you'll owe me money. I'm preempting it and I'm moichel you the money before it even started. That works because it's not a debt that he's raising. Is giving her work for free, for free, without Bechlaat talking about the money. Before the money started kicking in Bechlaat, that is because I'm giving you work. I'm giving you Sheva Kesef. No. Abinosa says no. Even if he talks about the future, the house I will paint for you, she's not Mekudesh. You know why? Because he believes he believes that when you start painting, there's debt, debt, debt. Debt, 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 Every strike, strike, not every stroke of the stroke of the not strike. Hopefully, it doesn't strike her. Yeah, every stroke of the paintbrush. So, Mimela, that's debt. To say you'll owe me and I will be more you the debt, that doesn't work because the Kurdish Mimilve, the Koshikin Bishasha Sisimech, to speak about all debt before the wedding, of course, it's not the Kurdish. That's why I'm looking. So, if you don't know, see, oh, man. Rabbi Yudanasi argues on both, and he says, Be'emis omu. Be'emis means it's not a point of argument for him. No, I agree that she's not Mekudesh either way, past or future. If he added an extra piece, after painting your house, he added a nice little, uh, I don't know, uh, protrusion there, a nice extra kishut on the wall, then she's Mekudeshes. Why? Because, says the Gemara, the Gemara is going to explain everything. What's the Mechlokes between Tanakama and Rabbonon? As I explained to you before, Tanakama says that if I tell you I will paint your house for free, that I will paint your house, according to Tanakama, it works. Why does it work? because a person is only supposed to pay after the job is finished. So if I gave her the Kiddushin before the job even started, I never bechlal creating a debt. The debt never ever was created, that's good. And Rabbi Nelson says, no. If I say, I will paint your house and then I will not take money, that means you owe me money and I will not take that money from your pocket. That's already speaking of debts and the of debt. That doesn't work and that's how Rabbi Nelson learned it. Now, the second Machlokis is Rabnosan or Abuda. What's been Rabnosan or Abuda? No, see, what's the difference between them? Ikebenayu, the difference between them is Milve Upruta, the same Machlokis as Rob mentioned before. If the craftsman tells her he's a professional painter and he says, I will paint your house, and then eventually, wow, she came and there's an extra nice, I don't know what you call Korniza, some nice protrusion from the wall some extra fitting on the wall. Wow, so thoughtful of you. Wow, what a great guy. That's a mechloikis. If you say that what, that her mind is on the 
oh, I'm so relieved that I don't have to pay you for the 2,000 shekel painting job. That's not good. That's what's on her mind. If that's what's on her mind, it's not good. She's miskadesh with the relief. Oh, oh, great. I don't have to pay the 2,000, the actual, the, the original debt. To not pay that, that's for the banker, not for your husband. But she ain't can, I, and she doesn't think of the extra protrusion or the extra uh, uh, whatever kind of embellishment. What? Okay, right. Okay, very nice. Okay, I hear. Or could be. So there's an extra thing, which was about, about the agreement. Right, right. As long as it's about the agreement, something she didn't owe him. And the other opinion says, no, if she thinks of the fancy thing which he added from himself, the Shavu Pruta, then she's with Kudosh. And that's Rabbi Yudah Nossi. Very nice. Omar Shmuel, let's just continue a little bit into the new sugya. We are now learning a new sugya, or we're basically done with Uman Kohen Bishmachli. As usual, I'm not so great at looking at Aloha, and Aloha, as far as I can see from the from the Tziyunim here, is we don't say Uman Kohen Bishmachli. It sounds like Shulchanoch does not believe in the concept of Ravasi. You have to work so hard. If I have time, I look at it today. I'm not sure I'll have time. I'm a very, very busy day today. I hope to have a look in Aloha and let you know. Omer Shmuel, let's start the new sugya, which probably tomorrow we'll uh, go more into. Tomorrow we start the sure five minutes earlier, my friends. I'm saying this also online to whoever listened. And 9.20 instead of 9.25, uh, for the simple reason that there's a seum which a lot of people you want to go to, maybe we'll all go to quarter to 10. So I don't know if we'll finish at quarter to 10 or not. That's also debatable. But Lamaise, at least we start five minutes earlier. If you don't mind, I hope it's not too much of a tircha. 9.20. Okay, and then we'll see what happens later. When we finish, we'll see probably earlier than usual. And any others, the talk with the Rav at 10, 15, I think, no? 10, yep. Omar Shmuel, says Shmuel. Tabach Uman. Tabach is not a butcher. Tabach is a shoichet. The person is a shoichet Uman. He's a professional shechter, professional shoichet. He's been through, hoo hoo, but that's the Haredis, and Rav Machput, and everybody else. Shekil Kel. I gave him my Lucy the cow to chef. I want to have a barbecue. The guy wants to have a barbecue. Yeah, Shekil Kel. And he messed it up. He got the Shekita wrong. The Ebema started jumping around. He moved the wrong way. The Kalkel, Chayev He has to pay. He may ask, what's the Chiddush? So now, how? why do we say that he has to pay? We say, first of all, Maziku. He's considered a Mazik. He's a damager. Hushehu. And he's also negligent. Okay? Listen to the words. He is a mazik and also a negligent person, which is worse than mazik. Posha means he was like careless. Yeah, he was like a days ago. Posha, he should have known better. And Nasa, it's as if, which means it's so bad that we view that shaykhet as if the person, the client, the behema owner, told him shaykhet from here, from this direction of the cow's neck, and he went from there. In other words, we view him as somebody very clumsy. That's the statement of Shmuel. Shmuel, Frek the Gemara, wait a second. Let's analyze what's going on over here. Lameli lemeimar, maziku kosheahu. Why do you have to call him names? Yeah, are you uh, three years old? You call him names? Why do you have to say both mazik, that he's a damager, and also to call him poshea? Why do you also have to say that he's negligent? I know he has to pay. Why do you call him mazik and also call him poshea negligent? Answers the Gemara. He Omar Maziku. If you would have said he's a Mazik only, but he's not at the level of Pshia. You tell me, what's worse, regular Nezik or Pshia? Pshia is worse. Pshia means you're negligent. Mazik. If I would have said only the word Mazik, Hava Amina, I would have thought, Hadi Mili Echad Kaovid Besachal. I would have thought, you know why he's Chayev? Only if he works for money. But if he voluntarily agreed to Shech Mekau, then if not for him being Moshe, he would not be Chayev. Let me explain. Here we stepped on a little bit of a mine here. It's actually a very cool kind of idea. Let me remind you what we learned in Dav Chavov, and that's a concept we've seen many times. Adam Muad Le'olom, right? A person is always Muad. A person is always liable for what he does. Even if you do it by mistake, even if you did the curve of oiness, the mice, if he did something, even if he went to sleep next to someone's uh, kalim, next to someone's uh, dishes, vessels, in the middle of your sleep, you scratch and you broke them, you chayim. You shouldn't have gone to sleep there. A person has to be very, very responsible for what he does. Now, I would have said, listen, 
if not the, for him being poshea, he's a regular mazik, or the mod loilom. However, however, if I asked you to come here, yeah, and do the job for me, that will, for free, for free, I'm doing a volunteering job for you, and you blaming me? You can say odomod la'olam, but it's not my business to be there. If I walk down the street like a klutz, I walk down the street in a bad way, and I bump into someone, I'm chayim. Who told you to walk here? Who invited you to bump into my car? Car accidents. They happen every once, uh, once in a hundred years. Yeah? Or the guy went to sleep next to, who told you to go to sleep here? But excuse me, mister, now I'm the lawyer of the shoichet. If my client, the shoichet, is a professional shoichet, yes, and he did it for free, he's doing you a favor. So therefore, as long as it's only considered to be regular nezek, I would say is off the hook. You invited him to be here, and you didn't give him money to obligate him to be extra careful. Just like a good friend, which we all know from Kita Dalit, Mr. Shoimer Chinam, has, very, has liabilities, but very minimal, I'm doing you a favor. You have kindness? Mechutzef. I'm doing you a favor. I have some liability. So I, I would say, because this is similar to Oynes, more, more like Oynes, not Shia, I would say it doesn't have to pay. I'm doing my job for free for you. What am I standing here for? You don't need to stand here. And I'm doing you a favor. I would have said, in this case, is not Chaim. When he gets paid, says the word, the COVID Besachar. If they pay him, then he's more mechuyav like a Shomer Sachar. You get paid, you have to be more careful. So if not for calling him Poishea, had he been working voluntarily, Bechinam, he wouldn't have to pay. I'm doing you a favor, Mr. Yav Chutzpah. Ah, Kamash Malan, end of first wide line, Poishea, end of story. Because the level of what? Of Shechita, if this is Tabach Uman, he's a pro. And he should have thought that the animal, says Rashi, he's a professional. He knows what he's doing. He didn't take into account that the animal may be Mephalkis, started floundering. Animal sometimes they move around unexpectedly, and he did not predict that. That's called Pshia. A Poshia, even Shamer Sachar is Chayev, or even a Sachar worker is Chayev. Because the level of negligence is so high, even though, excuse me, even though you do it for free, sorry, excuse me, I got it wrong. Even if you do it for free and you're a beautiful, sweetie volunteer, so what? Even if you're a volunteer, the level of cheer is so high, you can't get away uh, with that. That's again, Odomod, it's more than Odomod, it's Shia. Yeah, if a person is for Shia, that covers all grounds and he's always Chayev, even if he's doing it voluntarily. And that's why he had to add not only Mazik, he's also for Shia. So he's always, always Chayev. What do you mean before? And the shear is over, thank you. And what is your question? 